William F. Hill was not just a good man, he was a great man, and great men leave great legacies. When, when we first came to Iowa, there was nobody in the church, our family and a, an elderly lady and her two, two grandchildren. And dad knocked on hundreds of doors, just telling people he was in town and inviting them to church. Dr. Hill was a teacher, and he was one of the most prolific teachers I think I've ever sat under because he had a way of communicating with people on difficult topics with humor. He would open the door with humor and then drive home his point, and he loved to teach. Christians have more fun accidentally than sinners do on purpose. It's bigger than simple teaching, but that's exactly what it was. So Dr. Hill was involved with Free Gospel Bible Institute, not only as a Bible teacher, scholar, mentor to a lot of people at the college, but he was also a board member. And most of all the decisions made on the campus, Dr. Hill had influence. I think the first book that he wrote was entitled, What is Holiness? And he felt the need to write it for people. And when he said, when God laid that on his heart, he said, I'm a very simple man. I, I would write very simply. But he's, he wrote it and then started taking those, that book with him on his foreign missions trips. And people were starting to write him letters and saying, it's so simple, we can understand it. And then he realized why God chose him because he wrote in a simple manner. He didn't use big words. And he ended up writing, as far as I can tell, about 25 books. And some of those books, countries have contacted him and said, can we translate this book into our native language? And he always gave permission. He said, as long as you do not change the message, you have my permission to translate it. He wasn't in it for the money. It was the ministry. And the books that were sent overseas, they were given. He traveled to a lot of countries, and I would say he probably did over 20 mission trips. When dad was 52 years old, they diagnosed him with myasthenias gravis and, and told him that he would have that for the rest of his life, that nobody ever got cured from it. One night, the church, we, we were singing, the choir was singing, and um, I felt impressed that someone had called me and told me that we needed to get three bottles and we needed to break them, one for the spiritual, the emotional, and the physical. So we went out in the the car drive through part and we broke those bottles and we rebuked every curse and we, we rebuked the, the demon authority. I did not realize it, but he said from that night on, he felt, he felt something happen. And it was kind of a gradual process, but he went back to Iowa City. They ran a bunch of tests on him. And one of the doctors came in and said, well, Mr. Hill, how does it feel to be cured? of myasthenia gravis. They, they recognized it as a miracle. He pastored in Independence almost 50 years. We were, we were getting ready to celebrate his 50th anniversary, which was just a few, few months shy of when he came to the church. And on the weekend that we were to celebrate that 50th, he died. The 50th turned into his homegoing service. And when it was real bad at the last, I know he preached one sermon at least seven times, but people just kept coming to listen. What he was at church, he was at home. His drive and his passion for ministry and to make his life count had a great impact on my life. I feel like I am today what I am because of him. And Brother Hill was able to leave some of himself in people. Dad was a visionary. Whatever was, was the thing, he wanted to be right there, front and center. He was loved everywhere he went. We have pastors from foreign countries to this day that come back to the States and come to the church. Always get up and honor Dr. Hill. We have leaders today in denominations that were under his influence and looked up to him. And to this day, they still just to honor his wisdom. He was a real mentor to younger pastors. He would take a young pastor under wing and counsel them and encourage them and teach them, show an interest in them. 
that's that's just a legacy that's going to just keep moving on, moving on, moving on. The books and his and the writings that he has done, they've traveled literally all over the world and still do. Those books that he didn't feel like he was qualified to write, they're still helping people today. That's an awesome part of his ministry and his impact upon upon the world, how he has left his mark.